they always push on the idea of, well, if you're a Green Party, that means, you know, you want to stop Donald Trump. Or if you're Libertarian, that means you want to stop Harris. No, if you remember, Donald Trump came to the Libertarian Party convention and we booed him. If we wanted to be Republicans, we wouldn't be Libertarians. If you wanted to be a Democrat, you wouldn't be Green. If you exactly. cared only about winning, you'd be a Republican or Democrat. That's what they care about, winning. Nothing else matters. If you care about policy and issues, you become third party. That's kind of how that works. <laughs> how are you, my friend? Good to see you as always. Good to see you. I didn't mean to use a government name, but I just wanted to, you know. <laughs> I'm actually a Larry, believe it or not. I'm actually not a Lawrence, but I don't mind. Really? That's yes. interesting. I didn't know that. Yes. Most people who are Larry are actually Lawrence's, but I'm actually a Larry. So, yes, I'm one of the rare ones. I am. So you are a pure, unadulterated, 100% Larry. It's true. Yes, it's true. Absolutely. Yes. So nice. it's good nice. to see you, man. What's going on? I know a lot of stuff's happening. You are. I didn't realize you were that much into the Jill Stein campaign. I knew you supported her. I didn't know you were actively working. Good for you, man. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I was approached and I, you know, had to talk it over with RBN and my sure. you know, loved ones. And I was just like, should I, shouldn't I? And they were like, I think you should. I'm like, okay, cool. So I was like, all right, hey, this will be a good experience make, for me. She's so. going to make the most impact, I think, this year, right? I think that person was going to be RFK Jr. until he jumped on a Trump train. I thought he was going to make the most impact. But now that he's kind of out of that world, I think she's going to make the most impact this year. Do you think that that um, do you think that all the attention that she's getting now uh, is this going to be more of a setup for more stronger third party uh, positions in 2028 and 2032? I'm going to give you what I think most people don't want to hear, but I'm going to give you my actual opinion on this. It is okay. critically important. If you can, if you have any say in this, she should take all of her resources, and I mean every single, every dollar, every volunteer, every everything she can, and shove it all into Michigan. And I mean everything. She should abandon the other forty nine states completely, and she should just move her and where should move to Michigan. I'm not joking when I say this. Hear me out before you yell at me. Just hear me out first before you yell at me. The most important okay. piece here is. If she is able to get just 35% of the vote in Michigan, that's a win in the three-way race. That's a win. She's only 51%. 35%. Three-way race. You could win with 35% of the vote. You could win. If she turns Michigan green, imagine, and that means on that map, that will be, that we're going to see a thousand times next four years, there'll be a green blob right there. The Green Party becomes real. The Green Party becomes a thing. You will watch money and talent flock to it. And the biggest thing you get, I know you do, you get this all the time. JB, I would love to vote for her, but she can't win. You guys can't win. I know you get that all the time. I'm a libertarian. I get that all the time. Yeah. But now when she wins, Michigan, you go, what are you talking about right here? She won. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, no, it's right here. Here's the win right here. It's a win. It takes that out of the equation. Not just that. It puts her in the running. I'm not joking, for actual president. Why? Contingent election. To be part of a contingent election, according to the 12th Amendment, you must have at least one electoral vote. So that would mean if neither Trump nor um, Harris get 270 votes, it goes to the Congress. And the only people who are involved in that are those who won electoral votes. She now is part of that. Her people are part now she probably won't win anyway. Doesn't matter. Imagine the impact she makes for the Green Party for the next four years, there is no, it is politics. There is no substitution for victory. That is all that matters. If she wins anything, she becomes somebody. If she just, she gets a million votes, nobody will care. She's already got a million votes before and nobody cared. She wins Michigan, everybody cares. This is the number one thing she should do under any all circumstances, throw everything else out the window. I don't care about ballot access because here's the issue. She already can't get 50 state ballot access because of most of the laws in these states anyway. I know libertarians can't either. So 50 state ballot access is not a thing anyway. So stop worrying about it. Instead, win that state and you will watch the money flow. There's a whole lot of anti-war Democrats who would love to back Jill Stein. You know this, but they won't because she can't win. 
all of a sudden she wins something, it wouldn't be her. Maybe Ware runs next time. Maybe you run next time. Jill Stein can go can go retire finally if she wants to. It's fine. But she would be, if she did this, she is she is the mother of the modern day Green Party if she does this. Because everything will come from that. There is no doubt that if she wants to do this, everything goes into Michigan. And I mean, they pack you up and move you. Everybody goes to Michigan. And you get your 35 to 4% of the vote. You win Michigan. And now everybody goes, holy crap, the Greens are real. Oh my God, they're real. And you will watch money flow in. And when money flows in, what will happen? In 2026, in the local elections, you'll actually get ballot access in 2026. In the state you missed. So by 2028, you might get 50 state ballot access because you have money, you'll have talent, you have people who believe in you, you get a whole bunch more votes. All of a sudden, things change. The answer is winning Michigan at all costs. Nothing else matters. Otherwise, what's she going to do to be forward? She's going to come in third or fourth, right? It's going to probably, when it comes to popular vote, odds are you're going to have um, uh, Harris come in first in a popular vote. She may lose the election. I don't know if she's going to win the election, but she'll probably come in number one popular vote. Because there's physically more Democrats. Than our, there's about 40, 50, 40 50, 50 million Democrats, I think, registered, about 40 million Republicans. So the odds are she'll get higher in, in popular vote. Then come Trump, come Trump, regardless of who wins. And then third will be either RFK or her. RFK is still going to get a million votes. There's enough people who still love him and worship him will vote for him no matter what he says. They're not going to vote for Trump. They're going to vote for RFK Jr. So that number. And the next number is her. So she comes in third or fourth. Right. Mm -hmm. Then comes um, Chase Oliver. Then comes um, uh, Cornel West. That's going to be the lineup. Three and four is I'm not sure who. Right. If she comes in third or fourth and doesn't win a state, nobody will care. She's done it before. She ran before and came in third or fourth and nobody cared. You win Michigan. I don't care if you come in third, fourth, fifth or sixth. You just won a state. That's a victory. So that's my view. People don't want to hear it, but I think it's the right answer. That's uh, that's that's heavy, but I can't I can't really contend with it. You know what I mean? Hmm. I there's one other answer. She's gonna get Damn, third right? place. So what? She gets third place. So she's got third place before. So nobody cares. Yeah, I mean, you make a strong point there, man. I, ah. She has Woo! limited funds, but here, let me go one step further. She has limited limited funds. But, That's true. Yeah. And you know, if you're on a campaign, you know how hard it is to raise money, particularly now. Right? It's hard. Mm. But now you go back to your donors and go, we got a plan. What? We're going to win Michigan. What? We're going to win Michigan. Holy cow. Yeah. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. This is going to happen. Dude, I raise money. It's what I do. You know I raise money for politicians. It's what I do. I raise it for myself, others. You got to have a reason for someone to give. Or they don't give. You got to have a reason. Now you say, we're going to win Michigan. I'm in. How much? I'm in. How much? Can I move? Will you guys pay for anything? Do my, no, on your own, man. Okay, fine. I can do a week in Michigan. I'll do it. And you're going to volunteers on their own dime who will go, I can do three days. I could do that. You're going to pack up and go to Michigan for a weekend, knock on doors and go back home. Guaranteed, because it's a mission. It's a reason. You don't have that now. You have a, well, we hate Democrats, which is nice, but that's not a reason. You say, we're going to win Michigan. We're going to put the Green Party on the map. We're going to make it to where in 2026, we get all those states back for ballot access. So for 2028, whether where runs, I don't know if where wants to run in the future, but assuming that he does, or maybe that he's just done with it. So someone else runs, who cares? You now have a viable Green Party with a victory under the belt. And that means in 2028, whoever's running, they got to mention, they got to mention Michigan every single time. They can't ignore the Green Party. They cannot anymore, which is what they do. They ignore the Green Party forever. They can't when there's a big green blotch on every map they show in 2028. They cannot. Yeah. And they're going to say, well, who's running this year? Oh, it's whatever. Maybe it's where or whoever. For the sake of argument, it's where. Where's running this time? He was the VP last time. He's running. Oh, my God. He's running? Yeah, he's the guy who won Michigan. Hmm. Oh, my God. Green Party becomes real. There is nothing that substitutes for victory. So you're basically saying it's basically you're making you're putting a crack in the hole, right? It's like if you if you're in a submarine and there's a crack in a hole, that spells doom for that submarine. Correct. Yes. And so basically, you're saying we just gotta crack the hole and it's over. 
A hundred percent. And it has to be with what people okay. agree. Look, you know this. Again, you're working in a campaign. You've heard this. People go, yeah, I want I want to vote for a winner. They don't even care about the policy. They just want to vote for a winner. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> yes. So show them a winner. Here's Michigan. There's your winner. And again, if Ware is running, well, then he was part of the ticket who won in in 24. So, no, no, I got my winner running. Here he is. He's the guy who won in 24. You want a winner? I'm showing you one. Vote, show up. You got people in your chat right now saying they would go to Michigan for a couple of days. I wasn't making it up. I just watched the comments in your chat. Like, yeah, I would go for three days. I'd go. They're saying it already. In your chat, popping up randomly. Yes. Look, I've been in the independent game since Gary Johnson 2016. Yeah. So I know one the of those, uh, game. Uh, yeah, he was one of the most successful third-party runs ever. 100%. Four and a half million votes. I was his surrogate. I was on TV for him multiple times. Yeah. I believed RFK Jr. was going to make that. Clearly, he didn't. But I thought he could do it. I was his surrogate too. 5% is what I want. 5% makes an independent party real across the country. That's what I want. And I, I thought I was going to get that with Gary Johnson. I couldn't. He got close, got 3%. Four and a half million votes was great, but it wasn't enough. I thought RFK Jr. could do it. He dropped out, so he's not going to do it. I don't think Jill Stein can get 5%. But can she get Michigan? Yes. Yes. Wow. See? Already. Okay. Look, yeah. I just see. Lewis Gordon said, I would go. Glow Fox, I could too. Yes. I'm not wow. making this up, brother. People would go. They would pack up and go. You would see them. This is the answer. If you have Whoa. any, if you have any influence in the campaign, please tell them what I said. Maybe they'll do it. Maybe they want to know. But I've been saying it. I said another podcast last week. Right? And you might uh, people have, have teased me. They said, "Larry, wait a minute. You're a libertarian. Why would you care about this Green Party? Because if we don't get a third party, we're all finished. That's why." If we don't, if the Greens blow up and do well and explode, so will eventually the other parties will follow behind them because they break a hole. The rest of us move through. Yeah. It, I, it, I it reminds, it reminds me of the, um, the uh, it reminds me of the, the, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and how Yes, we black people, we were able to get these rights, but then it also opened the door for many immigrants to be able to come in too. So it's just it's the same thing. It's like, yeah, we yes. can yes. crack this hole. Whether it like to be honest with you, whether it's the Green Party or Libertarian Party, I don't care who, as long as that ceiling is broken. Correct. Right? That's the only thing I care about. I have sat in court literally with with uh Jill Stein and her people. I've sat, I've sat in court literally with um, Harry, uh, Harry, Haw I'm sorry, Howie Hawkins when he was running for president and because yeah. we're all fighting the same people. We're fighting the same monster, right? It doesn't matter. We're fighting the same monster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and just to be fair, um, and this is true from uh, Z man, he says Steinware is already incorporating Michigan heavily into her overall strategy. This is true. I mean, they've been to Dearborn, so too many times to count. Um, yep. So I no think no such thing is too much. Hmm? No such thing is too much. No such yeah. thing is too much. No such thing. Keep don't stop. Keep going. That's <laughs> a yes. Yeah. Um, and so I can say that for uh, uh, looking at the itinerary of Jill and Butch, they've been going back and forth to Michigan quite a bit. Um, but I wanted to also get to this because a lot because. We're see, I'm seeing something that I've never seen before in my limited time of watching elections, that it feels like the corporate media is now sounding the alarm. They're ringing the bells going, yes. oh, my God, third parties are going to get us, right? Yes. Um, there was a segment that I shared with you that I wanted you to react to. And if we have time, I also want to get to the Lawrence O'Donnell segment because that just dropped like three hours ago. But I want to get into this. Uh, Stephanie Rule is actually talking to some uh, strategists from both the duopoly, and I want to get into this.
With the race tied, third party candidates, especially in battleground states, could be the spoilers in this election. Our nightcap is still oh, with us. This isn't one of those elections where we're talking much about third party candidates. We don't think they're out there, but they are. RFK is still on the ballot in Wisconsin. Jill Stein is still on the ballot in Pennsylvania and Michigan. Should these candidates be worried about it? Yes, because this may come down to a couple thousand people in Michigan, right? And if Jill He's Stein. Right. Sure, a couple thousand. I know people Paul, in- by the way. In your- Please go ahead. I know Paul. Uh, Paul Rykoff uh, started I- Iraq, I- oh, Afghanistan, Iraq war. No, Iraq, Afghan war vets, something like that. Uh, he started off as a very good guy. He, he was a, a veteran trying to help out veterans. He's become a massive grifter. I'm very disappointed in him. Um, I met him more mm-hmm. than once. He's 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 now all about the system. I wish he wasn't. He he supports veterans, but supports warmongers. That's not how that works. You can't support veterans and support warmongers, but he does both. Mm, okay. Thank you very much for that inside inf- insider info. A couple thousand people in Michigan, RFK Jr. can capture a couple thousand people in Michigan. They can upset the apple cart and determine the election. I've been covering this on my show for three years now. And I think people have underestimated the impact of RFK, not to win, not even to attract the majority of independents. Right. He's attracting a radical, specific group of people, same kind of people that attract Chill Stein. That might be enough to tip one or two. Swings that, That's mind. the threat that they present. What was that? This is, this is a lie. What he says, he says hmm. the threat is. They, they present radical people. 100% not true. Have you met RFK Jr. supporters? Have you, you know Jill Stein supporters. Are they all radicals? There are some, but there's radical Democrats and radical Republicans too. So yeah. it's not like there's some massive percentage more of radicals in the RFK Jr. group or in the Jill Stein group. He's just saying that to scare you. Remember, they have to use what's called the one word story. This is done in politics always, right? Radical, okay. um, uh, terrorist. Um, uh, crazy. It's the one word story. People who have no argument must make you believe the other person is not valuable. You can't listen to them. They're not important because I have no argument. So that becomes immediately this. James, you can't listen to these guys. They're radicals. So stop listening to them. I know they seem to make sense, but they're radicals. Don't listen to them, right? Or they're crazy. Don't listen to them, right? Versus listen, realize they're wrong and vote for the other person. No. Because you might realize they're right. So guys like Rykoff make those names. And that's how you do a one-word story. It's dismissiveness. They dismiss. It's such, you do it all the time. What they, they call, they, they call, oh, what do you call? Uh, Harris is a Marxist. Harris is not a Marxist. That's a use of a word so that people will ignore her. That's the one-word story, right? They do that all the time. I'm sorry, I didn't want to cut yeah. you off, but I just want to bring that piece up. No, no, no. And that's actually a really good point because they do they do that to Republicans and Republicans do that to Democrats. Yes. And they and they expect it to be able to work with, you know, the rest of us who may be voting third party. And it's like we don't care. It's like we we, we focus more on the policies. I, it's, it feels like it's a, uh, a, a a personality, a cult of personalities that they try to paint on others. Yes. And yes. It's like, and well, this person is this way. If you look at something interesting, the anti-war movement is only in third parties. Have you noticed that? It's only in third parties. It's what one thing we almost all share. Far left, far right, middle, third parties, we all agree. Why we bombing people? You don't, the duopoly is happy with bombing people. They don't care. They might yeah. choose which ones. They, I want to bomb some more brown people. I'd rather bomb some white people. I mean, they might decide on who they want to bomb, maybe, but they're bombing. It does not matter. They're bombing. But anti-war, we're all anti-war. Yeah. Yeah. Because whether you're third-party right-winger or third-party left-winger, we all say stop the wars. Correct. Mm. That's, we're, because what we're trying, the, the independent movements are actually focusing on the people internally, right? The duopoly is about the privileged. That's what it's about. If you're a duopoly, you're privileged. You like the way the world's going. You don't want to change. I get it. Look, if if I'm some Wall Streeter and I'm making seven figures a year, why would I want to change anything? Why would I? There's no reason. I don't care about Medicare. It doesn't matter to me. I pay private doctors. I don't care. I don't care about if things are expensive. I got tons of money. I don't look at the price tag when I go shopping. My person shops for me. I don't shop. Why do I care? Right? So, of course, you love Democrat, Republican. Who cares? All good. You don't care. 
But what about if you want to bombing people? Good. That makes people think about other stuff. The, the poor who get in my way, they can go off to war or whatever, right? That'll get them a little jobby somewhere. That's how they think. They don't care. But when you actually want to fix the country, that's when you go left, right, which is the right way to repair. How do I fix it? Third party is the future, which is why you hear me push third parties constantly all the time. Someone asked me now, I am opposed in many ways, policy wise to Cornell West, but I know him personally. I like the man myself. I happen to like him. Some people don't like him. I do. Um, I, I've, I've been on panels with him before. I like him. If he was the only guy on my ballot other than Trump and, and Harris, I would happily eagerly vote for him, even though I disagree. Why? Because I want third parties. I want to break a system. I want to break the system down. It doesn't matter. Look, if, if Trump or Harris wins this thing, if you lean left, you'll be better off if Harris wins a little bit for four years, a little bit, but it still suck. It'll still get worse. And then four years later, we're going to get whatever, President Cruz or whoever we get, President Rubio. So it's going to get bad again. It's matter. If you lean right, it'll be a little bit better if Trump wins because you lean right, but it'll still be bad and get worse. And then four years from now, we get whatever, President AOC or whoever is the next, you know, whatever, President Pelosi, if she's still alive, whatever, we get one of those, right? So it doesn't, if we don't change the system, we're just pausing a little bit, which way, whichever way you lean for four years. That's it. And in the end, the corporations still win. Correct. Yes. 100%. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you very much. Let's continue. Most independents want an alternative. They don't want RFK. They don't want Jill Stein. That's they a are lie. not they want real independents. That's a lie. But that is BS. Come on. <laughs> yep. Larry, lie. go ahead. Utter lie. He just made that up because he's he is a corporate chill now because corporations fund his, his nonprofit. Corporations and the government fund his nonprofit, so he is now a show for them. So disappointing. Damn. Wow. Okay, they don't want Jill Stein. They are not real independents. But these people fill a void real for a certain group of people. Right now, people That's what just said. said they're what was that? He just said real independents would vote for Harris. Are you smoking crack? I would like whatever he's smoking. That you would <laughs> think that real independents want to vote for Harris. Is what you said. Yo, when he said that, I was like, wait a minute. If they're actually if they consider themselves to be independent and they're voting for Harris or Trump, they're not independent. Yes. And he said exactly the opposite. He's like, no, real independents don't want independent candidates. Real independents want the establishment. What? War is peace. Slavery is freedom. That's what he just said. War is peace, slavery is freedom. He just said that. And the and the and the brain dead chimps at MSNBC went, yeah, 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 because every one of them is privileged too. Every one yes. of them. Is. Yes. Everyone. It used to you be. Know you what? Please say that again. Years. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll, I'll just go. No, no. I was saying say that again because a lot of times yes. people like myself, I'm voting third party because I do not have the privilege that they have. Yes. Exactly correct. Look, I don't. Uh, two parts I want to bring up real fast if I could. Num number one is every sure. one of them is privileged, right? They sit there and they're all getting paid six figures a year to sit on a radio station or a TV station that no one really watches, right? That only like that literally 300,000 people who are over 60 watch. That's all the people who are watching it. And they get paid seven figures a year because their establishment and the establishment still has value. It always will have value. So they get paid a bunch for that. Great. They're talking to nobody. They mean nothing. It's useless. They have no power. And we know that because once they leave, they fail. Mm -hmm. The second they leave that position, they fail. They suck. Their position is good. And they think they deserve their position. They don't. They got lucky. They are good looking people who know how to read. That's literally who they are. <laughs> That's all. Every one of them. They're good looking people who know how to read. And they all went to Ivy League schools. Every one of them is Harvard, Yale, Every one of them is that. So you're that. So you're party privileged. And you used to be maybe like considered one of the poors because your family happened to be black or Hispanic or whatever it was. But you were elite because you went to elite schools. So you still became elite anyway. And you've forgotten where you come from. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm, like, I, like I'm some guy who like lives in a, a poor neighborhood or something. I don't. I am a proud member of the professional um, consulting class. I'm in, I am, and I, I, make, I make good money, but I didn't forget that I came out of the South Bronx. I didn't forget that I was raised by a single mom. 
I didn't forget that my mom is, was a felon and an addict. I didn't forget that. That's the difference between me and them. I didn't forget. I still remember it. That's the only difference. But no, I moved up. I'm happy and proud about them. You've never heard me cry about that. I tell people where I come from all the time. I don't mind. And I tell them where I am now. And I'm happy where I am now. I have mm -hmm. a lot more privilege in my family than my family had. Tons more privilege than my family had. But I still recognize privilege when I see it. That's the only difference. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Larry's spitting over here. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. All right. Let's continue. Her objective is to beat Kamala Harris. If you want to beat Kamala Harris, you want to throw a wrench in the system, you want to protest Gaza, you want to do any number of things, Jill Stein is here for you. But most of all, they are the candidates, not of independence, but of people like Putin, of Trump, mm. and of disruption. So that that is some go. bullshit. 100%. And you got me going again on this, Then This guy says, he, again, this is, this is the one-word story. I get it. I even get it from your chat. Your chat will come on and go, Larry's a lolbatarian. Right away, they'll attack me trying to dismiss me, the same thing he did. One word story, can't listen to Larry because you said the thing. That happens all the time. I get all the time. If I say, I don't want us fighting in Ukraine, I don't get, oh, Larry's a peacenik, which I am. Instead, I get Putin puppet. I get that instead, right? Always. It happens. I go to podcasts, get it all the time. I expect it. It happens. He does it now too. But again, what he said, he literally said, if you want to protest or whatever, or, or, or try to beat Kamala Harris, that means you're Putin or you're so the, so Harris is the appointed person. No democracy, no voting. I actually have won the same amount of states that Harris did, by the way. I've won the same amount. Zero. She won none. <laughs> Me <laughs> <Right>? too. <laughs> yes, you too. We have all won the same amount of states that she won. The same amount. All yeah. of us have. Yes. She was anointed. She was thrown in. And now she was made perfect all of a sudden. But for democracy, you have to vote for her. So you have to vote for the appointment. If not, you're a Putin guy. Women, Putin's also anointed. Judge, how does that work? Right? How does that work? No way. This is this is this is something he just makes up to dismiss you. Remember, they don't have arguments. Since you don't have arguments, all you can do is scream other guy bad. Don't listen to other guy. That's the issue. Yeah, and the thing is, like he says that. They just wanted to be Kamala Harris. I'm like, actually, you're right. Yes. We do want to vote for I'm here Jill for it. Just to be Kamala Harris. But I also am voting for Jill Stein to beat Donald Trump. See, that's the thing. They always leave out the beat Donald Trump part, too. Correct. It's like, no, 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 no. She's running against both of them. It's not just one or the other. Well, it's not, this is not a team sport. I have to grab this one. The people they always push on the idea of, well, if you're a Green Party, that means you know you want to stop Donald Trump, or if you're Libertarian, that means you want to stop Harris. No, if you remember, Donald Trump came to the Libertarian Party convention, and we booed him. If we wanted to be Republicans, we wouldn't be Libertarians. If you wanted to be a Democrat, you wouldn't be Green. If you exactly. cared only about winning, you'd be a Republican or Democrat. That's what they care about: winning. Nothing else matters. If you care about policy and issues, you become third party. That's kind of how that works. Basically, oh man, I'm loving this conversation. Let's continue. Mantha, what do you think? Well, I, I suppose I beg the question, like, what do you do? What do you do if oh, you're Kamala Harris? You do. With the <laughs> you do ex exactly what she's doing. Yeah. She's revealing Jill Stein. She's running ads against Jill yeah. Stein. They're calling him out and saying, what I've been saying is, if you're a real independent, don't waste your vote. Don't fall for the trick. It's a wasted vote if you if you put it toward one of these people. I'd be really full. Pause that. Wait, how, how is it a waste if people Thank vote you. their conscience? Yes. Literally what she says, she goes, okay, so, and imagine this for a second. What is her question's an honest one. Okay, so now you've got Jill Stein popping up here. She's here. What do you do? And his answer is attack her. Now, he didn't say, well, you should show people what a good what good policies I have, or you should show people how I'm gonna help them, or you should show you should beat her in ideas, you should debate her and slaughter her on the debate stage. Now, if it's me, I'll say I'll happily try to debate somebody on the debate stage. Happy to do that because I believe in my policies. I believe in what I believe in. I'm happy to promote them and tell the world about them. I believe they're true and right or I wouldn't believe them, right? I do. But no, instead of that, they go, you should call their names and tell independents that tell independents that voting independent is wasted vote. 
Freedom is slavery. War is peace. Mm, mm, mm. These mother... Mm. <laughs> yes. Focus less on the third parties, but more on the, the newer voters that are coming out and, and, and figuring out if they're actually voting for the parties that they, they want yes. to, right? I think, I think one of the bright spots in... Um, the logic? early voting numbers was the amount of newly registered voters. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a beautiful mm -hmm. rise spot. I, I don't necessarily share your same view that it's as, uh, as dangerous as it, as it is having the third parties on those states, but I could be wrong. No. In Wait, the, 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 the Irish lady just basically prove our point? Yes, she was like, yeah, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Look, because I'm, I'm gonna, they have third like, parties in the UK. Yes, it's okay. Yes, the world doesn't end. Yes, and look, let me let me give you a reason why I was so happy that RFK Jr. ran this year. And some people were mad at me for it, but I don't care. I thought it was the right answer. And here's why I'm happy he ran. He brought up he brought up ballot access like nobody's business. I spoke about ballot access these last this last year. Excuse me, more than every libertarian for the past 50 years combined. People start to understand the problems that ballot and Greens and Libertarians have been fighting this battle for 50 years, trying to get them ballots throughout the entire country for years. RFK yeah. pops up, everyone's talking about it. So happy he did it, happy he ran. That was great. Now we're talking about that. That's an important piece. And they're trying to push that away. That he had to spend $20 million on getting ballot access and still couldn't get on, on the ballot. That's a big deal, right? That's number one. Number two, there's a new thing. I don't know if you care about this, a new thing called Policies for the people. It's policies for pe policies for people.com. If anybody wants to check it out. And that is actually now started where people who were in the RFK world who cared about policies and wanted policies to change, they now go there and they can put their policy ideas up. And uh, RFK Jr. and Trump was to look at it. I hope they will. I hope I was look at it. But that kind of community came up out of this, right? That kind of community that didn't really exist. So community came up out of this, right? I'm sure you're saying the Green Party now. The, what Jill Stein has done very well um, is unite or maybe like coerce, um, is that, um, so coalesce the anti-war left better than anyone I've seen in a long time. Maybe Bernie had done it in 16, maybe. But prior to Bernie 16, and that's a maybe, she's done it better than anyone I've seen in a long time. The anti-war left has jumped around her. And with that in mind, they're funding her. This is not a bad thing, right? If if she spoils Michigan, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. If if I get more of an anti-war coalition on Jill Stein's side and then a, a freedom policy coalition on an RFK Jr. side, we are better set for 2026 and 2028 than ever, whether they win or lose. Right. This has been a very good year for independence in general. I wish it was better, obviously, but this is better than 2020. 2020, 2020 was a disaster for third parties. It was a disaster. This is way better for third parties. And not just that, look at the independents. Look in Nebraska. Dan Osborne is running in Nebraska. The Democrats were so broken in Nebraska that they can't run a Senate. This is a U.S. Senate, not local state Senate. U.S. Senate. There's no Democrat running. Dan Osborne is running against a Trump-backed Republican, and he might win. He's actually looking good. This is happening more and more. Independence, two, uh, two years before that, um, in Utah, uh, independent ran. Democrats won't run a campaign, won't run a, a candidate in Utah because they can't win. They don't, they can't raise money. They can't win. So they instead decided to, to throw an independent up there. He almost beat Mike Lee, and Mike Lee is a very popular senator in Utah, and he and he almost lost. So the independent movement is happening now. It's absolutely happening now. I I do think that this is going to be a good year, even though it won't be great. Better than twenty twenty. Yep. Thank you very much for that. In Michigan, there, we know there is a large Arab American voting base. Over 100,000 there voted uncommitted in the Democratic primary. Now, they might not be going out and voting for Donald Trump, but how concerned should VP Harris be about this group? I think she should be concerned. I'll never forget on 26, uh, 2016, watching the reviews coming in, the reviews. The <laughs> <laughs> It's all theater. Yeah. You know, watching it, the exact the quiet part number out loud. of votes that Hillary Clinton needed. What was that? I said it is theater. She, she said the quiet part out loud. Well, <laughs> you won't get any pushback from me for on there. So. <laughs>
number of votes that Hillary Clinton needed to win certain states. They went to Jill Stein. They went to Gary Johnson, I think his name mm -hmm. was. Yep. People oh, yes, it was. And I have to ask, like, what's what is their end game? Like, it, it, she doesn't, she wants to hurt Kamala, but then what does she want to do? Mm. What do they want to do? I've never figured that they out. They want to so win. Long. They want to break the what system. Is, like, what in the world? Damn. Yeah. Let me let me ask you a question. If you if you lean right, if you're a right leaning person right now, and you used to support the Republican Party, okay. Over the past twenty five years, the Republican Party has been in place where it where it actually owned the House, the Senate, the presidency, and the courts. Okay, where's your balanced budget amendment? Nowhere. Where is your where is your um, rebooting of the uh, border laws? Right. Where is your changing of the asylum laws? Nowhere. Nowhere. Okay. What if you lean left? Great. Democrats have had both the House, the Senate, the presidency, and also the Supreme Court. Okay. Where's your Medicare for all? Nowhere. Right. So everything you might want, you don't get. It doesn't matter. And they just keep saying, and where is your codification of Roe v. Wade? That didn't happen either. Just get that too. What happened? If you lean right, you don't get what you want. If you lean left, you don't get what you want. What we want to do, Miss. Miss, I am also privileged sitting on some stage of people because I make six figures a year and have forgotten where I come from. She also is saying, well, you people just, you know, you people. That's her. What are these people? That's her. Because she's not part of them. She doesn't understand what's happening. She could care less. She doesn't. She gets on the stage. I made it and I pulled the ladder up. Oh, well, forget about it. We don't care. She pulled the ladder up and she made hers. And you, and you pours. Why do you guys have these worries? Stop getting in my way. I've got money to make. That's where yep. she is now. And she acts like she's one of us in some way. Stop that. She's not. She doesn't care. That's why she says what she says. Yeah, absolutely. I can't stand whether black people do that to her, to themselves. Um, let's continue. Have love power. Some of them want power. Well, want they influence, want money. Yeah, I got tons of power. Grifter. Yeah, I was I mean, going to yeah. say, oftentimes. Oh, oh you're a grifter. You, he, he called her a grifter? Yes. This guy's the CEO of Grifters, and he's calling her a grifter. Ah, oh, horrible. Wow. Wow. Goodness gracious. Sometimes you're in the grifter zone yeah. when you That's don't know it. what money is behind you. You don't know what farm powers. Right. Yeah, I mean, farm I think that. Powers. Wait, 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 wait. She said, you want to know what the grifter is, but you don't know what the money is behind you or foreign powers. I'm sorry, but... How many uh, people has Kamala and Donald, how many people that are uh, billionaires that are giving them money? What about APAC? That's money from a foreign power called Israel. Why aren't we talking about that, MSNBC? Miss Stephanie Rule, I think you really need to get into looking at the foreign powers and the money that's going into the duopoly. Yes. How, yes. Well, how did... How did people like Cori Bush and Jamal Bowman lose? Who put their money behind their opponents? Yes. You are 100% correct. The craziest part is, where is who gets the dark money? Now, there are packs that are dark money packs that exist 100%. So dark yeah. money packs, great. Who gets that yeah. money? Is that is that Jill Stein getting all that dark money? Is that Gary Johns who got all that dark money? Is that Howie Hawkins getting all that dark money? Is that is that Chase Oliver getting all that dark money? No, that's Trump. And Harris getting all that dark money. It's yeah. like, you don't know who's behind it. No, no, you don't know who's behind your girl. You don't know who behind your boy. We know who's behind ours because we work in the campaigns. And we know exactly. We meet the donors. We know who's given. We know. Yeah. And in fact, there was, a, a, there was a Jill Stein event where people were literally on camera saying, oh yeah, I'm donating this much. I'm donating $500, I'm donating $1,500. Yes. These yes. were people on camera with their faces saying, I'm donating. Yes. Absolutely. No. And these third parties, who's donating what? And the thing is that they're not big corporations. They may be some people who may be more affluent, but that's sure. it. Yes, absolutely, yes. Oh, Utter man. hypocrisy, total hypocrisy. Yep, absolutely. The question here about how both campaigns, Harris in particular, can offset those votes is by 
making sure she has more voters coming out who she knows are going to support her, right? New voters, yes. I mean, I'm going to draw a sort of graph here in midair, but if you look at <laughs> turnout over the you know, percentage of people who turn out by age, it sort of goes like this. You have this blip at the beginning when people are like 18, 20, it's the first election, then it goes like this, and then it goes up like that, right? And so for a long time, this this end of the spectrum has been the Democratic end, where they, you know, even if they are independents, but they are, have, are liberals mostly, and they vote for Democrats. And so that is where we, Democrats always had troubles, getting those people out. Now, interestingly, this race actually has a lot of support for Harris at the other end of the spectrum, which is good news for her, but she still has a base of people who are less likely to turn out and vote. And so what they, yes, they're doing these ads targeting Stein and revealing her for who she is, mm -hmm. but they also need to she make is. sure they're doing everything in their power to get as many of those people who are even thinking about voting. But when you say a base of people that are less likely to vote, yeah. Are you just saying that, like, yes, we know the die hard MAGA fans mm -hmm. are going to vote all day, every day, yesterday, hand tomorrow, hand. and they're going to go to a rally. But just because her base is not as fervent wearing 16 hats and a flag outside mm -hmm. their house, does that mean that her voters well, are less enthused or, or, or less? No, I'm talking structurally. Structurally, well, it is less the case that younger people vote than older people. Mm -hmm. And their jobs hey, can, make it so you, it's harder for them pause? to get away. They don't know how home. They go ahead. Yeah, I want a couple of things I want to bring up during this conversation. Every mm -hmm. single thing they talked about wasn't factual. It was dismissive. And that's what I keep saying. She, he says, you know, it's revealing who she is. What Has Jill Stein been hiding everything? Is that what she's been doing? She's run before multiple times. She's been mm -hmm. vetted before. Whatever you like or don't like about Jill Stein, you knew that in 2016. You knew that in 2018 when she ran before, right? In tw no, 2014 when she ran before. Like, she's she isn't a new person in that regard. And they act like it's revealing. That, why say that word? Because you have to assume that she is somehow hiding. She's somehow an agent. She's somehow a provocateur. That's the piece. And the second thing, she uh, Stephanie says, you know, there's just some people who just vote for Trump no matter what. Because they're crazy. Not because they hate the left, which some do, or because they actually love Trump, because some do, or because their family and friends are doing it, because some do. There's many reasons people vote for Trump. Same for Harris. Some people vote for Harris because they hate Trump. Some because they actually like her. Some because their family and friends do it. People are doing it for many different reasons, but she must be dismissive of the people she don't doesn't like, which is Trump supporters. They're, this is all. This is this is basically a Harris rally, is what this this show is. This show is a Harris rally. So she has to make the people who are Jill Stein dismissive. RFK Jr. dismissive. Trump people dismissive. Everyone else is smart and savvy, right? That's how it has to become. And she brings up a very valid point. She goes, you know, they, they got a, an American flag and six hats on. Again, because they're crazy and dismissive. Everything is, you're not saying, and what you should be saying is, hey, wait a minute. Trump's policies, he didn't help minimum wage, even though he's working at McDonald's. Okay, that's a valid concern. Say that. That's a valid reason to say, I don't want to vote for him if you don't, I don't know if, if your, your viewers like or hate Trump, but whatever. That's a valid reason. Have that conversation. Okay, what about minimum wage when he's sitting and working at McDonald's? Okay, valid reason. Not, well, because you wear six hats and a flag. That's a stupid reason. That's dismissive. If you really don't like Trump, there are many reasons to say that. Policy issues, personality issues. You don't have to insult the voter. And they do. Yep, absolutely. Let's finish this up. They, they move all the time. And so they have to re-register to vote and then they forget about doing so. They're not in the habit of voting. They don't have, they have less income. Like there are all these factors the that make it so that young and people of color are more likely. Yes. And they, they, they just don't know. They don't one, know what to look one for. One of the biggest Google right. search for uh, Google searches for Gen Z's about voting is what do I wear to vote? Sure. Like they, you have to wear the uniform. Wait, exactly. Like, they need to know. Really? So, yeah, I know. so now we're insulting the younger people. Yes. Absolutely. Everything is dismissive. At this Again, this is a Harris rally. At what point did I bring up any issue or policy or thing that Harris would do well? Not once. Not once. Why? That's what Harris rallies are about. Dismissive. Yeah, right. Yes. Yes, it is why. And, it's, and, it, and I'm going to bring it up because it's important. You will find so many men hating this. So many men, because men deal with being disrespected and dissed constantly, particularly men who aren't making much money. Constantly. If you're a man who's not making a lot of money, you deal with feeling dis disrespected and dissed 
constantly by your friends, by society, by women, by your partners, constantly by your parents. You get dismissed constantly. You get disrespected constantly. And now you see this and this vibe makes you not like them. This vibe makes you not want to be around them. And what third parties do well is they bring in all the misfits very well because we're all misfits. So they bring in all the misfits and we feel at home. That's why when people go third party, they rarely go back because they actually feel at home in the third party. Because I'm not, I'm not mad at you because you can't give me a $12,000 check. I'm happy you did some phone banking for me. I'm happy you did a show and put me on. I'm happy you did a sign waving for me. I don't need you to write me a check for $12,000. But these guys, you can't write a check for, for three, four grand? You're poor. I don't need you. You're not important. That dismissiveness is turning a lot of men off. There's, yeah. You see there's a huge gender gap. And it used to be Democratic Party, used to be, but not to anymore, it used to be the party of the working class. Now, the Republican Party isn't that yet. But is it trying to become that? It's struggling to become that. The problem is its history has not been working class at all. So it has a massive institution, massive establishment of not being for the working class at all. So for it to make that shift, that's turned the Titanic around. It's a massive term of the Republican Party. They have not done a good job of this at all. And the Republican Party doesn't reach out to, 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 to black, uh, the black communities. It's terrible at that. It doesn't do it well at all. That's a whole, it's a massive turn. So what's happening? You find people who are working class and you find people who, who are of all colors, some that look, look at other options. The Democratic Party has abandoned them and the Republican Party can't absorb them. So what do you do? You either just go to the Republican Party and say, I'll just take it, I'll deal with it. It's not perfect, but I'll deal with it. I think a lot of people are doing that. Or you go third party. The problem with third party is you don't win. So you start feeling like, why bother? This goes back to what I mentioned win Michigan, win yeah. Michigan, get a win. You'll see people flock. Yeah. Let's uh, finish this up. And honestly, if you know, of course, I, I, I want to cry because you know what I thought she was about to say, because I just interviewed a bunch of college students who were saying, we can't figure out what the policies are. And I thought you were about to say, no, these young people are interested and they just don't know what the policies are. There is, oh my I, I don't God. Mean to be what? What? But there are, are a lot of new voters. That it, is, it seems like it's such a foreign thing to them, right? They don't, they don't know the rules of voting. Mm -hmm. And this is like, they live in a digital world. They don't like, I have lots of gentlees that work for me. They're they're even picking up a phone code for voting. But they don't they, they, necessarily they're also know that. the selfie they're going to take. But oh, that's that's what yeah, 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 yeah. I want to look good. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to finish completely because well, these... just look at how they laugh at it. Look at how dismissive they all are at this. They're just laughing. That's once again, they insult the young people who have legitimate concerns. And I know this can be kind of silly, but uh, as a millennial, we invented the selfies and we're the ones that are taking a lot of the selfies, not the Gen Z. So you leave that vanity to us. You're but, right. <laughs> but the point is, is that I was, and, and it's funny because um, at my great nephew's birthday party, I was speaking to his uncle on the other family side, 21 years old, young man. And he's told me he does not like Donald Trump and he does not like Kamala Harris. And he yep. did not know that there were third options. 100%. And once I showed him that, he was very appreciative of learning that there are third options. He didn't know there was a Claudia Del Cruz, a Dr. Cornell West, a Dr. Joe Stein, or a Chase Oliver. Hell, there's Jasmine Sherman. There's uh, Dr. Shiva. There's all these different yep. people out here, right, that are third party that you could actually vote for. And if you go according to their policies, then you can find somebody that actually fits the values that you want to vote for. 100%. But the problem is, is that they purposefully shh, you can't talk about him. And you know what's funny about this, Larry? I wanted to bring this up. You know the phrase they say, I think it's first they ignore you, yep. then they fight you, and then you win? I forget exactly the, the phrase. It's, it's I think it's first they laugh at you, no, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. Yeah. 
Right now, they're fighting. Yes. That's my point. They're fighting. That's my point. Yes. Yeah. That is my point. If you remember, immediately, the first attack they went after, the Democrats, the Republicans kind of chilled. They were not very aggressive this year. They have been the best. They're the ones who sued me off the ballot in 2022. So Republicans are just as bad as Democrats. But this year, Republicans were like, we're not worried. We think we got we got Donald Trump. We're good. That's what most Republicans thought. We'll be fine. The Democrats mm-hmm. thought, oh, my God, we have no policies. We have no actual candidate, which was worth anything. We better attack RFK Jr. to make sure he's done. Because RFK Jr. had the best chance to have impact this year early on. That was He, he was the best chance for impact. So they yeah. threw everything at him. They put a bill. I'm not joking. They put a billion dollars aside just to stop him. They sued yeah. him in 18 states. Yes. And they won in most of them and lost in others, but they fought him to the end. He, he lost tens of millions of dollars just trying to get in the ballot. They fought him like there was no tomorrow. And they won. And then they wonder, why do you go to Trump? You literally destroyed him in every way, shape, and form. Why wouldn't he? Of course he would. Of course. And Republicans like, oh, free votes? Come on in. That's how Republicans saw it. Free votes. Come on in. Go take them. And they took them right in. Of course they would. Why wouldn't you? It makes total sense, right? So then Democrats, okay, we got rid of him. Now what do we do? Huh? Oh, my God. Jill Stein. And if you notice, it just turned to Jill Stein. They ignored Jill Stein for months. For months. But then they were afraid of something. They knew that RFK Jr., his people, wouldn't just turn on Trump. Some would, some wouldn't. Some would turn to Trump, some wouldn't. They're like, oh, what about those who won't? Oh, they might go to Jill Stein. Turn on Jill Stein. And now, if you notice, the second, about a week after um, RFK drops, they spend some time attacking RFK to make sure to push him out. Good, you're gone. And then they turned all their guns on Jill Stein. They ambushed her in the breakfast club. They ambushed her everywhere. Everything's an ambush. And this is what I got to give Jill Stein. I've met Jill a couple of times. I happen to like her. I know some people don't like Jill. I know if you like you know, like I get it. I, I met her. I like her. I don't have a problem with her. Um, so she will go into the lines then. And a lot of people won't. Stein will. Stein will go into the lines then. And Ware goes in fighting. Where Butch goes in with gloves up. He goes right in. He is right in. He does not care. He goes right in. Right? Like that. He goes in. He go, goes in mitts up. He's ready to go. But in any case, my, my point being, um, I do think that they turned on her because, again, to your point, they got to push everybody down. She's the next one they're fighting. But here's the issue. If she holds on, which, again, this is the advantage, I think, of libertarians and greens. We never stop. We fight to the end no matter what. Other people, yeah. when they see how hard this is, they often quit and they drop. Because running, I've run for office more than once. It is brutal. It is hard. And the last couple of months is just terrible. It's so hard on you personally. But when I was done in 2018, I was six figures in debt. When I was in 2022, I was 40K in debt. Now, most people couldn't even handle that, would never do it again. I'm stupid and I'll do it again. But I just keep doing it. Luckily, I'm in a position to where I can recoup that money. Over time, I can recoup that money. Again, I'm part of the professional managerial class. I can recoup that money if I need to. And I can raise money. I raise over half a million dollars twice for both of my, for both of my races. So I know I'm a good fundraiser. I can raise money. I can do that. Most people aren't in that position. I recognize that. And it becomes tough. But if you are a green or libertarian, that means you're an ideologue. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing because it means that even when stuff is tough, even when you're going to lose, even when the media is destroying you, even when you're being annoyed, you won't quit. Most people will. What I'm happy about Chase Oliver, and I'm happy about Jill Stein, is no matter what, they're going to the end. They're going to the end. And when you go to the end, now people go, I believe in that person. Okay. I believe in them. When you drop out, people go, eh. Do you know what I'm saying? We need more people to keep pushing forward, more people to keep doing it, more people to keep going, no matter, no matter how bad it is. Because eventually, to your point, there's a saying, my, my, my normal job is I'm a business consultant. And one of the things I tell people is, it isn't you can't win them all. It's you can't lose them all. Mm-hmm. Eventually, you, you win. Know. Eventually you win. And if you keep pushing, if it isn't you, it's the guy or gal behind you. People ask all the time, Blau, you keep running. You're going to try to save the world? I don't think I'm going to save the world. I don't. Do I think I can set it up to be saved? Yes. I think I can be one of the people who sets up to be saved. I do. 
I think if I can get ballot access, if I can push forward, if I can get the third party messaging out, right? If I can be a good surrogate for third parties, I was a very good surrogate for um, Gary Johnson, 2016. I was a very good surrogate for, for RFK Jr. here during this, this, uh, this when he was running. I was a very good surrogate for him. If I can be a good surrogate because people see there's some value there, we can make this happen in the future. Yeah. Many hands make the load light, right? Yes. You know, uh, absolutely. Man, there was this segment that Lawrence O'Donnell did. I wish I had enough time, but I promised you 30 to 45 minutes. But, uh, but yeah, there was this segment that uh, Lawrence O'Donnell did. And he even brought in Jill Stein's family on it. I was oh, like, I hate what? that. Ah, uh, uh, dude. Let me Lawrence let me go O'Donnell. off on that for a second. They did it with RFK Jr. too. And that kind of personal attack. Let me let me. <clears throat> all right. My daughter now is twenty. She might want to go run for something. Let's say she runs and she is not a libertarian. Am I going to be like, my daughter's terrible? Oh, I, no. I would I, Now, might her and I have a discussion at dinner table? Perhaps we would. But publicly, I'm going to say only one thing. My daughter is her own person. Good for her. I hope she does well. I love my daughter. That's it. That's what I'm saying. Even if I disagree with her completely, she's my daughter. I'm not going to diss her in public. Never. Now, her and I have disagreements at the dinner table. Maybe. That's fine. And then that's between her and I. In private, we can have those conversations, but she can do whatever she wants when she's out there. If if I don't like what RFK Jr. is doing and he's my brother, I'm just going to go, he's my brother. You know what? He's his own person. I hope he does well done. They sold out their family for politics. Shame on every one of them. Shame on any of Jill Stein's family who would do that. Shame on any of RFK Jr.'s family who would do that. You would sell your family for politics? What is wrong with you? What a horrible person you are. You don't like their politics? Awesome. Don't really, I don't really agree with his politics, but good luck. I love him. He's my brother. Move on. You got to go out there and you got a virtue signal to strangers who don't give a shit about you compared to your brother, sister, cousin, uncle. Why would you do that? That shows how bad you are as a human being. I'm sorry. I'm just being, you got me going on this one, JB. That's your fault. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, it's just what, what Lawrence O'Donnell said was just uh, he basically kept saying that, oh, Joe, vote for Joe Stein is a vote for Donald Trump. And I'm like, dude, you actually said something quite the contrary a few years ago. And a lot of people forget um, what Lawrence O'Donnell said. Um, if it's like less, it's like a minute and 11 seconds, if you got time. Go, no, please go. Okay. So let me share this because the, the segment where uh, Lawrence O'Donnell is going off about how a vote for Joe Stein is a vote for Donald Trump, that's like almost 10 minute I got video. About, I've, I've got about 15 minutes left, give or take. Okay, so I'll just play this short video then instead. But this have is to, what Lawrence O'Donnell, block. Yeah, Lawrence O'Donnell said this because a lot of people forget that he said this. So whenever you guys see that segment about Lawrence O'Donnell talking about a vote for Joe Sines, a vote for Donald Trump, I want you guys to play him this. If you want to pull the party, the major party that is closest to the way you're thinking, to what you're thinking, you must, you must show them that you're capable of not voting for them. Because yes. the way the Democratic Party is run now for quite a number of presidential cycles is they pick a nominee in a kind of half-assed process that doesn't really represent much of anybody. Yep. And then you tell everybody to just shut up. Don't yep. bring anything that will complicate life for your nominee. You know he's not for you on this. Why badger him? He's not going to yep. be for you for reasons that you don't understand but are good reasons. Shut up. Turn off your brains. Yep. If you show them you're capable of not voting for them they don't have to listen to you i promise you that i worked within the democratic party i didn't listen or have to listen to anything on the left in while i was working in the democratic party because the left yep. had no way to go yes and i gotta tell you before i was a libertarian um i had an idea i said all black people should vote republican for one for one cycle. 
probably 2004, I was thinking that, 2000, 2004. Because I was always voting third party. Like I voted for uh, Perot in 2000, I'm sorry, 1992, 1996. I voted for Nader in 2000 and 2004. So I was always the third party guy. So I was like, it's not working. We should all just like vote Republican one time. That was my thought process because I was thinking kind of he was thinking if we, vote, if we vote Republican one time, then Republicans go, oh, wait a minute, I can get your vote. I might pay attention to you. I mean, I don't now, but I might. And Democrats yeah. like, oh, wait, I have to pay attention to you or I'll lose your vote. Yeah, maybe you should pay attention to me. So I was thinking it back then. Now I've changed my mind. Now I'm like, just all people should go third party. Just go third party. Just go third party. And then they have to change, right? The, the powers that be, to O'Donnell's point, don't care about you or me. They care about power. So if we can show them that they can lose their power, they will react. Again, not because they care about us, because they care about their power. I think that's the piece. So I want to end with this one question. Are third parties dangerous? Um, absolutely yes, and that's why I love them. 100% yes, and that's why I love them. They are dangerous. Dangerous to the thing that I can't stand, which is the status quo. I hate the status quo because it's not helpful and everything that's happening is getting worse for everybody. And I look at it in America, we are having, we are having less opportunity for people, less, and, and, I'm sorry, less opportunity for people, less safety for people. Um, we're having less people falling in love, less people having good health. We're having more and greater wealth gap, more and greater income gap. Nothing but bad is happening and nothing's being solved. I want you to ask yourself, when, when in the world have we solved something? Can you remember? I can't. That's not a good thing. We don't solve things anymore. We just fight. And the third parties are the way to force them to stop just letting the same thing happen again and again and again. The past 25 years, we've rotated it back and forth between Democrats and Republicans. And what have we gotten? 25 years of decay. That's what we've gotten. 25 years of decay. Nothing, just decay, more decay, more decay. Things have not gotten better. Third parties are the way to fix that because at least then third parties are the way that we can make something change without violence. I do not want violence. We haven't recovered from our first civil war. I don't want a second one, right? I don't want us to go to violence. And my worry is what they all say. MLK said it. Thomas Jefferson said it. If we don't provide people with the ability to have a peaceful revolution, to have a peaceful change, we are making violence inevitable. And I don't want that. So yes yeah. to your question. They are dangerous and that's good. Absolutely. Well, with that being said, I'd like to thank you for joining. Uh, this was a very enlightening and cathartic conversation, especially in uh, regards to third parties. Uh, where can they find you and all the socials and all the other good stuff? You can just check out Larry Sharp on everything. I'm on everything. Larry Sharp YouTube, Larry Sharp Twitter. Larry, I'm on Getter. I'm on everything. You name it, I'm on it. Just Larry Sharp everything. That's my YouTube page. Absolutely. Check out my YouTube page if you want to. It's great. Uh, please check me out to the best of your ability. Subscribe if you want. I do a show almost every day. Somehow I'm live almost every day someplace. I'm happy to have you guys on board. All right. Thank you so very much, Larry. Good to see you. Take care. Have a good one. Bye. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.